The three formulae you see on the screen are the most important formulae in calculus. What unites them all together? That would be the squeeze theorem. But what is the squeeze theorem, you might ask? Consider the function, which we are going to call up of t for reasons which will be explained, and consider the function low of t, which lies below up of t, except at the y-intercept of 1. Suppose we have a function that wiggles in between these functions and has really erratic behaviour. Call this the mid of t, aka the middle function. If we were to travel along mid of t toward the centre, what number does it approach? Well, visually, it looks like it's going to approach the number 1. From the picture, we see that low of t has a y-intercept of 1, likewise for up of t. And we see that mid of t lies in between these two functions. This means that the limits must be equal to one another, and since up of t has a y-intercept of 1, its limit must equal 1. This is known as the squeeze theorem, which we can use to derive those crucial limits that we've seen earlier. Let's draw a unit circle, that is a circle with radius 1, a triangle with base 1, a sector whose angle is the same as that of the triangle, and a triangle inside the sector sharing the same angle, t. As t decreases, the point moves along the circle, but the green triangle remains smaller than the purple sector, which in turn remains smaller than the red triangle. But doing a bit of trigonometry, the green triangle has area half times 1 times 1 times sine of t, the area of the purple sector is given by t divided by 2 pi as a proportion of the area of the unit circle pi times 1 squared. And the red triangle has base 1 and height tangent of t, therefore it must have an area of half times 1 times tangent of t. We can simplify some of the calculations, get rid of the 2, and recall that tangent of t is equal to sine of t divided by cosine of t. Dividing out by the sine, and taking reciprocals, we obtain that the cosine of t is not more than the sine of t over t, which in turn is not more than 1. We can plot these graphs for easier visualization. The function y equals to 1 is the upper function, the function y equals to cosine of t is the lower function, and visually we see that the cosine of t approaches 1 as t approaches 0, and clearly the function 1 approaches 1 as t approaches 0. Since sine of t is squeezed in between these two functions, these limits imply that the limit of sine of t over t equals 1. Graphically, we see that sine of t over t really does lie in between cosine of t and 1. We can do something similar with the exponential function. It turns out that we can lower bound and upper bound the exponential function using some polynomials. We can subtract by 1 on all sides, divide by t on all sides, simplify the left and right hand side via some algebra, and subtract by 1 on both sides. Graphically, the lower function has equation y equals to negative 2t, which approaches 0 as t approaches 0. Similarly, the upper function is given by y equals to 2t, which approaches 0 as t approaches 0. Since the middle function is squeezed between these two functions, and the upper and lower functions approach 0, the middle function also approaches 0. In turn, we have the limit of e to the t minus 1 over t equaling 1. A similar argument could be made using slightly different upper and lower functions in order to establish the left-hand limit. For the third limit, consider the graph of f with y-intercept f of 0. We notice that f of s is bounded by the minimum m of t, 
and the maximum capital M of t. This allows us to calculate its area by taking the integral from 0 to t. This area is larger than the small rectangle, it is not larger than the large rectangle. As we move the point closer and closer to 0, we notice that f of s always lies in between these two bounds. What's even more fascinating is that as we move the point t closer and closer to 0, both of the mt's approach f of 0. By the squeeze theorem, it also has a limit of f of 0. For the full details, check out the document in the description box below. At the start of the video, I mentioned that these are the most important limits in calculus. Why is that so, you might ask? Finding the limit of sine of t over t equaling to 1 actually helps us derive that the derivative of sine is cosine. Finding the limit of e to the t minus 1 over t equaling to 1 actually helps us derive that the derivative of the exponential is itself the exponential. And finally, finding the limit of 1 over t times the area equaling f of 0 actually helps us derive the fundamental theorem of calculus which basically says that differentiation and integration are reverses of each other. For the details of how we prove these results, check out the document in the description box below. And this gives us a glimpse into real analysis. If you want to see how we can use tricks in real analysis to make sense of the exponential function, click on the video here.